it. I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. It has come to pass. I didn't hear your amen. The fullness of the blessings of God and all the pronounced um, prophecies and promises in your personal life, in your family, in your ministry, in your loved ones, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you because all the promises you have given us, they'll be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. And launch the faith to keep on expecting, trusting you, and knowing that you will always do what you have promised you will do. Grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Tonight, as we look at the Good Shepherd, we pray that you interpret your word, apply the word to every life appropriately in Jesus' name. Bless your people and make us channels of blessing for many other people. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. We're coming to John chapter 10. Reading from verse 11. John chapter 10. Reading from verse 11. I am the good shepherd. Here is Christ speaking. Here is the Savior, the Redeemer. And he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Is the good shepherd because he made a sacrifice. The sacrifice that made him our substitute, that all our sins and the sins of the whole of humanity had been laid upon him. That good shepherd gave his life for the sheep, became the savior, became the sacrifice, became the sin bearer. In verse 14, in verse 14, he emphasized the same thing. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. He says, I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. Then in verse 16, he tells us, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. That tells us very clearly, the New Testament believers were part of the sheep. And those who came after until this time and until this generation, everyone that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ were part of the sheep. He was looking forward that we will come in. And as we have repented of our sins and believed on him, and we have come into the kingdom, into his fold, we are now part of the sheep. It says, all the sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Even now, it says, all the sheep that you have seen, and they have gathered into the fold. This is not all. There are still people outside. There are those who have not been born again. That's why we are workers. That's why we are ministers. He's sending us out to go and bring the other sheep in, which are not yet of the fold. Them also I must bring in. The master does that with all his servants. The Lord does that with all his disciples. When he says, I will bring them in, I must bring them in. He'll use you, he'll use me. He'll use us together. He'll use every member. He'll use every minister. He'll use every worker and every leader to bring them in. Them also, I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. He says all the believers from the first generation to the very time when the rapture will take place, we will be one. And if that is so, all the true believers of this generation, of this time in which we live, all the true believers of this assembly will have one fold and one shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. The topic we are considering today is titled Full and Free Benefits from the Good Shepherd. Full and Free Benefits from 
the good shepherd. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the redemptive sacrifice of the good shepherd. Already as assured us, he gave his life for the sheep, for our redemption. That's the sacrifice, redemptive sacrifice of the good shepherd. Point number two, the revealed stewardship of gracious shepherds now is transferring the ministry to us because he says he will bring all the sheep and we are the shepherds now under the chief shepherd under the great shepherd under the good shepherd that good that go out to bring others unto him and he reveals our stewardship our servitude our service as we act graciously bringing sinners into the kingdom and discipling the saints the children of god who are born again we're discipling them encouraging them edifying them building them up point number three the recognized salvation of his guileless guiltless sheep it says i am known of mine and my sheep they know me i give them eternal life and they follow me that's the way you recognize the sheep because they follow the savior they follow the lord recognize salvation of his guileless sheep we're coming to point number one in point number one the redemptive sacrifice of the good shepherd let's come back to uh, John chapter 10, reading from verse 14. In verse 14, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I'm known of mine. Verse 15, it tells us, As the Father knoweth me, even so know, know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep understand he has laid down his life for you there should be no doubt in your heart there should be no doubt in any heart you are precious in his sight and that's the reason why he laid down his life for you but you say i wasn't um, you know i wasn't in the line of righteousness i was bad i was sinful i was bad that's exactly why he came he knew that you couldn't save yourself he knew that as sheep you will go astray and you didn't have the strength you didn't have the sense to follow the right way and because he knew you will be lost he knew that every sinner will be lost if they were not saved that's why he came to bear the punishment of our sin and he laid down his life for the sheep look at verse 16 which we read before and other sheep i have others who have gone astray others who are sinful others who are bad others who are rotting others sheep i have even though they are sinners even though they are sinful even though they are in the world he knows them and he says i died for them every time you see a sinner whether the sinner has committed the sin before you knew him or even in your presence is acting like a sinner and doing evil don't despise him that's the sheep that jesus died for that the savior died for and he must bring him if you despise him you'll not make any attempt to bring him in if you look down on him if you belittle him and if you want to almost punish him as if you are the judge you will not bring him in see every sinner as the sheep that Christ died for, laid down his life for to bring in into the kingdom. He says, I must bring and they shall hear my voice. Beyond hearing your voice as the preacher, beyond hearing your voice as the soul winner, they will hear the voice of the chief shepherd and 
they will come in and there shall be one fold after they are saved we don't leave them outside uh, to keep on roaming the streets we we'll bring them in to join the people of God we we'll disciple them we we'll follow up on them so that they will be one fold under one shepherd the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 17 he tells us therefore does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again he did it cheerfully he knew it was it was going to be a great suffering but for you and for the sinners he wanted to redeem us that's why he laid down his life voluntarily personally and cheerfully wholeheartedly single-mindedly he set his face as a pledge to go to Jerusalem where will die for you and for me and for all sinners that I might take it again in verse 18 it says no man take it from me that he is a pilot herod and all those jews that say crucify him if he didn't submit himself if he didn't surrender himself there was no way they could catch him you remember when those people came and they wanted to arrest jesus christ and he said who are you looking for they said jesus he said i am he they fell down and he could have come legions of angels from heaven to deliver him but no no man take it, it from me but i lay it down of myself i have power to lay it down and i have power to take it again this commandment have i received of my father and let's understand all that he did so that he'll be the sacrifice redeeming us from sin redeeming us from the wrath of god and from the punishment of our sins isaiah chapter 53 reading from verse 4 in isaiah please open your bible chapter 53 verse 4 surely he has born our grief surely there's no doubt about it all your griefs and all your sorrow and all the punishment of your sin all the consequences of all the sins you have ever committed big or small injurious that hurt other people that even hurt yourself surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted you understand that the punishment that that should have come upon you upon me upon all sinners in the world in every generation because the soul that sinneth it shall die and there is no escape though hands join with hands no sinner will go unpunished and jesus saw that that punishment will be unbearable for you that even the strongest of men and the stoutest of men and the most courageous people when they come under that punishment it will break them down they will cry but there will be no mercy because judgment must come over sin it's appointed unto men wants to die and after this the judgment now jesus christ our savior voluntarily took all those sins upon him that's why the smiting that should have come upon you upon me upon the whole of humanity that smiting then came upon christ and the striking to strike us with the judgment that should have come christ voluntarily took that that's why it says smitten of god and afflicted verse 5 in verse 5 it says but he was wounded for our transgression he was wounded for your transgression always understand that once you shift all that transgression upon him lord i'm sorry I know that I've offended you and you show the sinner that they cannot bear the punishment of their sin and have any kind of joy or happiness once they die forever forever they'll bear the wage and the load and they'll bear the pain of that torment of fire but now they can come to the Lord 
and the Lord was wounded for their transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, how many of us are healed? We are healed. Look at verse 6. And I wanted to notice the word all at the beginning of the verse. And the word all at the end of the verse. The verse starts with all. And the verse ends with all. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And that includes you, includes me, includes everyone. As we see the evil of our sin. And we recognize how dangerous, how deadly, how damning that that sin, those sins will be. And we come to the Lord all without exception. You don't have to worry and say, am I included in that sacrifice? Am I included in the provision of salvation? It's for you. And the people you are preaching to, you are ministering to, uh, sometimes they have got erroneous doctrine. And the, some of them think, Maybe I'm predestined to die and perish. Maybe salvation is not for me. Maybe I've gone too far. If God wanted me to uh, be a part of this, maybe I would have been born in what they think is a Christian home. But you tell them all at the beginning of that verse, all at the end of that verse, all we like sheep have gone astray. There is no exception all have seen there is no perfect person there is no angelic person there is no righteous person no not one all we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone to his own way if somebody says you know i know my problem i'm stubborn and I'm, I'm, I'm selfish and I always want to have my way. So that's everyone, me too. And everyone too. Everyone has gone his own way. But now that we realize that the way of the Lord is not our way and our way is not the way of the Lord and we're willing to turn to the Lord, he forgives and he forgets all that he has forgiven and there will be a new life. Every one of us will have turned our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of how many people? Of us all. That's why we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, the old lifestyle, the old sins, the past transgressions, that she may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened. Look at this. For even Christ our Passover. Our Passover. And when I see, not just the blood now, when I see his blood, I will pass over you. Once you come to the Lord and you come under the redemption of the blood of Christ, under the provision of the blood of Christ, and under uh, the, the prophecy and the promise of the blood of Christ, when I see his blood, upon you by faith i will pass over you for even christ our passover is sacrifice for us and verse 8 tells us it says therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven let us come into the fellowship not with the old lifestyle not with the old sinful nature not with the old sinful practice let's leave that outside Turn away from that, repent from that, and come fully into the fold, into the fellowship, into the feast. Not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Let that be all gone away from your life, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. In the Old Testament, all those Israelites will search their houses and they'll sweep away, they'll take away totally everything of Lebanon as they stage under the protection of the blood of the Lamb. The same thing now in a spiritual way, in a moral way. All the things that are sinful, 
malice and wickedness and deception and any violence all those things like leaven we now take away and we come with sincerity and truth it says in first timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 5 first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 for there is one god god the father and one mediator that's the lord jesus christ one mediator my father and i are one one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus look at verse six in verse six who gave himself a ransom for all that what all is very important there are many people that you know in the world they are religious but even in their religion they have doubt they have fear and they have fear of the future i don't know whether i can ever be saved because they have tried and tried and tried to live a righteous life the way they think they can live a righteous life they have tried and failed and they have tried and fallen and because they have failed because they are falling because they do not have any strength because they faint like sheep without any shepherd sometimes they'll give up because they cannot save themselves they say i don't think i can be saved i don't think salvation is mine but jesus gave himself a ransom for all always emphasize that to be testified in due time in first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 24 in first peter chapter 2 verse 24 it tells us who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree very clear very clear on that tree where he was crucified he bore our own sins he bore all our sins that we being dead to sin when he took our sins away that is all the sins of the past he also did something in, in our nature he deadened our nature to sin so that we'll not be responsive to sin anymore the sins of the world that used to attract attract us he deadened us to all those sins all those transgressions all the iniquity we don't have any interest in them anymore being dead to sins should live unto righteousness our desire our aspiration our love and the things we want to do they're now things about being righteous righteousness that we should live now in the new life the life of the new creature we should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed he healed our soul he healed our spirit he healed our mind he healed our body he healed our emotion he healed everything so that now as a man that is healed and healthy healthy internally healthy outwardly healthy in your spirit healthy in your soul you cannot walk in the strength of that healing in the way of righteousness that leads to the kingdom of god in verse 25 it says in verse 25 for ye were a sheep going astray that's about the past life but that past life is cleared off and cleansed off but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls it tells us in titus chapter 2 verse 14 titus chapter 2 verse 14 it tells us what christ has done and the reason he gave his life and the effect and the consequence of that life that he has given who gave himself for us for us all for everyone for you for me and for all the people our neighbors and the people we're speaking to who gave himself for us for us jews and gentiles for us who are born in this religion in that religion in every religion he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from here is it again all iniquity and when he cleanses us we're clean and when he washes us we are 
proper and upright before him and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he puts his nature into us and that nature wants to do good works what that nature wants to help other people that nature wants to love other people that nature wants to count every person on earth every neighbor precious and he wants to take care of the lives of other people because they are now precious he gives us that nature because now we're passionate about doing good and we are zealous about doing good and we pursue wanting to do good it doesn't occur to us to hurt anybody and to do evil and to bring anyone down but now we're zealous of good works it says in hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 20 hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 now the god of peace he gives us peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus christ he rose up again because he wanted to make sure that everything he died for after he rises up he'll be able to offer everything so as the risen lord and savior he comes to everyone he comes to you and he comes to me he says i died for you but i'm risen now to make sure that the effect and the result and the consequence of my my death my redemptive death my rest my this resurrection will not make available for you it says uh, that brought jesus again from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant what does he do with the blood of the everlasting covenant look at verse 21 in verse 21 make you perfect in every good work to do his will day by day and day after day he lives in us he says i'm crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but it is christ that lives in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me and because we live by the faith of the lord by the strength of the lord we live by the resurrection power of the lord he says now he makes us in every good in every work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight he makes us to please god every moment and every way everywhere we go in whatever situation and you are with a man you are with a woman you are in the light or it happens to be in the night people see you or people do not see you because he lives on the inside and he gives you the zeal he gives you the power he gives you the passion he gives you the desire to do good all the time whether believers are there to see you or not what pleases the lord what is well pleasing in a sight that's what he makes you to do and there's no guilt and there's no condemnation all that he does in our lives through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever and the people of god said amen, amen. revelation chapter 5 verse 9 in Revelation chapter 5, reading from verse 9, and the song, and the song a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. When we get to heaven, we're getting to heaven when we get to heaven we shall get to heaven but the redemption of christ will be there but the blood of the lamb will be there but the grace and the mercy of god will be there well i will be there we will see with the redeemed of all ages and we will glorify the lord and say he has he was slain and he has redeemed us to god 
by his blood out of every kindred out of every tribe out of every tongue out of all the peoples and generations of the earth and out of every nation i pray you'll be there in jesus name we're coming to point number two now the revealed stewardship of gracious shepherds the, re the revealed stewardship of gracious shepherds now he is the good shepherd he is the great shepherd he is the glorious shepherd he is the chief shepherd but now he has appointed us and he has given us to the people as shepherds and we graciously and we gracefully now go to the people and do the work of a shepherd we go to the sinners to seek for them and we go to the saints to develop them and to disciple them and our stewardship our service our servitude and the things we ought to be doing as shepherds under the great chief shepherd all that is revealed in scripture in john chapter 10 verse 16 john chapter 10 verse 16 all the sheep i have which are not of this fold no matter how moderate no matter how great or big our congregation is look around and jesus said some people are still missing they are sinners they have not been saved i have them they are mine all the sheep i have i died for them they are not yet in this moderate fold they are not yet in this big congregation i must bring them them also i must bring i must bring not just that i will make them to know that i died for them i will go and i will tell them through my servants through the soul winners and through the shepherds that have appointed i will convince them through you that i died for them they will feel the conviction they will go on their knees they will turn away from sin they will turn to me to be their savior and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I will save them. I will not only save them and then leave them in the world. I will bring them. Understand that when we go to preach, it's not enough to say, eh, so and so God saved, so and so God saved. I must bring them. Them also, I must bring number one he brings them to god he brings them to righteousness but he brings them also into the kingdom and into the full them i must bring and they shall hear my voice i bring them and then i'll be speaking to them out of the scriptures as the pastor in that local church as the preacher in that local church standing in for christ will be declaring the word of god week after week i'll be speaking to them and because they are born again and you have brought them in a saved condition there and then there shall be one fold they will all believe one thing they'll all accept one message they'll all dine at the same table and they will all grow on the same solid food of the watch of god they shall be one fold and one shepherd and then he tells us in jeremiah chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 4 jeremiah chapter 23 looking at verse 4 it says and i will set up shepherds in the plural over them i the lord almighty will set up shepherds over them i set them he said some 
to be apostles and to be prophets and to be evangelists and to be pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come all together, no exception, we're now feeding on the word of God because the Lord has set shepherds and pastors in the fold, in the flock, in every local church. I will set up shepherds over them. When I set shepherds over them, them, what have I assigned them to do? What am I expecting them to do? You are shepherd over that house fellowship. You are shepherd over that zone. You are shepherd over that district. What has the Lord assigned, appointed that you will do? It says, look at this and shall feed them and shall feed them it's just like in our families we are fed and the food is cooked they don't give us just the raw food get it from the market and just say give it raw we'll not be able to eat they don't take it from the fridge cold and there is uh, there's nothing done about it at all we cannot eat it like that as we look at the word of God, is the preacher, is the pastor, is the shepherd that the Lord has placed on the congregation, on the house fellowship, and on the group of people that will take the food. We cannot just throw the verses at them and quote the verse and quote the verse and quote the verse and throw it at them and say that there you are, eat all that. They don't understand, but we will explain we will apply and we will teach them and they will feel that they are really fed and it is that feeding on the word of god that is properly disseminated to them that's what will make the people to grow and that is the assignment the lord has given to us the verses we quote will rhyme together will not say will not just jumble those verses together we link them together in a logical way we link them together in a convincing way we link them together in a persuasive way and it will drive the point into their heart he will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more as the people are coming from idolatry and they are coming from their evil ways they fear superstition they fear idols they fear the causes costless and they fear the night and they fear darkness and they fear all the moonlight stories they have heard this will happen this will happen some of them are coming from all those uh, churches where they are cultic and they have told them if you ever leave this place this will happen to you that will happen to you they have a lot of fears they have fears of their own sins the weight of their sin they have they have fears of the consequences of what they have done they have the fear of uh, their family what i mean is a generational sin this happened to grandpa this happened to grandma this happened to papa and this happened to mama this happened to cousin no, they have their own fears that this might happen to them they have the fears of the evil they have done in the past that maybe god will never forgive any little sin that happens to them maybe this is the reason and this is the cause of all that is happening to me but then he sets shepherds over them and the shepherds will feed them with the word of truth with the word of faith and with the word of power and the word of assurance and their fears from superstition to all those other fears everything will be cleared away and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking says the lord as we teach them in their lives they will not lack that means then the soul winner who is doing the follow-up the preacher the pastor who is uh, doing the discipleship and the training and the teaching will be so thorough and will understand the needs of the people and there will be no lack in their lives check up in your own discipline and in your own shepherding 
how are you teaching the people how are you following up on the people and what are you teaching them that will make them so solid that will make them so concrete that they will not fear they will be well fed in jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 jeremiah chapter 3 looking at verse 15 and i will give you pastors pastor shepherds the same thing according to mine heart not people who are walking according to their own heart and they'll beat they'll beat brow a uh, brow beat all those uh, all those uh, little lambs and the sheep but people according to my heart that will think the way i think that will feel the way I feel, that will have compassion the way I have compassion, that will focus and concentrate on, on the sheep the way I would have concentrated, that will take as the greatest thing, as the greatest privilege, the opportunity of ministry you know, to the sheep. That's the kind of shepherds, that's the kind of pastor I will give unto you according to my own heart which shall feed you with knowledge with knowledge not with something superficial my people perish for lack of knowledge and it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge it says i'll give you pastors and shepherds that will feed you with knowledge and with understanding as we come to isaiah chapter 40 we're looking at verse 11 i say chapter 40 verse 11 he shall feed his flock like a shepherd this is how the shepherd feeds his flock he shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom there is affection it's not just that you know we're preaching and then whoever takes it shall take it whoever cannot take it that's between them and god no not at all you carry them in your bosom and you carry them in your heart and you take the knees to the lord in prayer you are concerned about their growth you are concerned about their happiness if anything is happening to them and they're weak if anything is happening to them and they're fainting you carry them in a way and you help them in their emotion you help them you sympathize with them you empathize with them you put yourself in the same place where they are you suffer with them in their affliction and they know that you are almost living under their skin you carry them in your bosom and gently lead them you are not ruthless gently lead them you are not forceful gently lead them you are not a kind of oppressing the people you are gently carefully and leading them that are was young that's the attitude the lord wants us to have in ecclesiastes chapter 12 he now begins to tell us how a shepherd will take the word and then he'll organize everything properly so that the people will get the best of the word of god and moreover because the preacher that's a shepherd because the preacher that's uh, the pastor because the preacher was wise he still taught the people knowledge he taught the people knowledge yea he gave good heed he gave heed to his own life he gave heed to the needs of the people and sought out and search in order many proverbs many principles he search in order the word of god and he goes step after step and stage after stage and point after point and principle after principle he sets everything in order his diction is understandable you can hear him you can understand his words he doesn't pronounce his words as if he's just talking to himself and he's speaking to the pulpit he speaks to the people and the people can hear and they know the practical things he said is delivering to them look at verse 10 in verse 10 the preacher the pastor the shepherd sought to find out 
acceptable words understandable words the words that the people will understand and that which was written was upright even the words of truth here is a person that is uh, diligently studying the word of God to show himself approved unto God and is properly and rightfully dividing uh, the words of truth. Look at verse 11. In verse 11 it says, the words of the wise, the wise preacher, the wise pastor, the wise shepherd are as goats and as nails fastened by the masters of the assemblies which are given from one shepherd the words of the shepherd will go into their heart and then you nail the point and they understand this is the way and they will walk in that way ezekiel chapter 34 we're looking at verse 6 the assignment and the appointment and the expectation of the Lord from you the shepherd from you the soul winner and from you the worker and from you the pastor the preacher Ezekiel chapter 34 we're looking at verse 6 my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill ye my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them when people backslide we don't just talk about it we don't just ask people have you seen brother so and so have you seen sister so and so the lord expects us and the lord assigns us to search for them and to seek after them in verse 7 it says in verse 7 therefore ye shepherds hear the word of the lord in verse 8 in verse 8 it says as i live says the lord god surely because my flock became a prey he prayed to false prophets he prayed to wolves he says because my sheep became became a spring my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd neither did my shepherd search for my flocks but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock these were shepherds that took delight in coming to the training, in coming to the development, in coming to all the retreats, in coming to all the weekend uh, revival sessions, and they feed and feed and feed themselves. But even though they feed themselves and they're full of knowledge and they're full of uh, all the things they ought to do, but they do not go after the sheep and they do not go after the flock. In verse 9, it tells us in verse 9, Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. In verse 10, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm against the shepherds. I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease to stop from feeding the flock neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore I will deprive them of even the source of their feeding themselves and I will stop them from feeding my flock after all when they had the chance they're not doing it they are selfishly thinking about what they have and what they want to have more without thinking you know, of the state of the lostness of those who have gone astray for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them in verse 11 it says for thus says the Lord for thus says the Lord God behold I even I will both search my sheep and seek them out is saying uh, i'll raise up other shepherds that will run after them uh, that will be zealous and that will be excited enthusiastic about seeking uh, after my sheep it tells us in acts chapter 20 verse 28 acts chapter 20 
in verse 28 here the apostle by the spirit of god is speaking to you and speaking to me is speaking to every shepherd every pastor every overseer every minister and leader every worker and every member of the church take heed therefore unto yourselves therefore unto yourselves see the assignment of the lord see the appointment of the lord and see the expectation of the lord take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock you take heed unto your own personal development you take heed unto the assignment the lord has given you you take heed unto your attitude you take heed unto your emotion and you take heed unto your mind you know when we go out you have to put many things behind you and you know your own personal problems your own personal challenges that could be read on your face sometimes and your own personal difficulties that that you know you are thinking of yourself or do you think you are uh, doing your duty and you are going out you are not taking care you are not taking heed of yourself that your problems show on your face but now you are cheerful in the lord you forget all those things you know that you have committed them to the hands of the lord and the lord is taking care of them take it unto yourself that you don't go out you don't reach out to people you don't touch people's lives in a negative way with a negative attitude in a negative way with negative emotion and then your life is all right your life is pure your life is plain your life is righteous take heed unto yourself you are not yielding to temptation you are not a backsliding preacher a backsliding shepherd a backsliding person that is carrying guilt about you're even guilty of your own misbehavior you take heed of yourself take heed unto yourself and to all the flock all the flock there's no partiality you love this you love that you love them for christ's sake because they belong to the lord and you are not tribalistic you are not saying i'll preach to this that one is a particular tribe it's a bad tribe and because the wicked tribe they are going to perish let them perish you are taking care of all the people that jesus died for you don't have any enemy you don't have any tribalism in you and you don't have any any kind of partiality in you to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God to feed the church of God you're not looking at uh, you know the way uh, they treat me and the way uh, they don't take care of me and the way they don't I was sick they don't they didn't even ask of me and this and that and now they want me to minister to them all right I'll minister to them and your heart is not right with the congregation it says feed the whole church of God which he has purchased with his own blood I pray God will make every one of us faithful every day at every point and to all the flock of God in Jesus name give me better headquarters amen we're coming to point number three now point number three the recognized salvation of his guileless guiltless sheep now we've uh, done our work we fed them we preached unto them conviction came upon sinners and then they confessed their sins that's confession and then they believed on the lord jesus christ confidence in christ their savior and then their lives are transformed that's conversion they are converted unto the lord as they are converted to the lord how do we realize how do we recognize the life of christ in them how do we recognize Recognize that this is a candidate for heaven is born again is converted and the grace of God is leading him to godliness and the grace of God is working out in him the evidence of that salvation that we can recognize identify this is a saved soul point number three the recognized salvation of his guileless sheep 
We're coming to John chapter 10, reading from verse 4. John chapter 10, verse 4. And when he put it forth his own sheep, his own sheep, his own sheep, is talking about those who are born again by the blood of the Lamb. And Christ recognizes them as his own sheep. Have you ever been in any situation that you happen to be teaching in a class and one of the students there happens to be the daughter of the proprietor, of the one that founded that school? and um, you know the children they did this and they did that and you maybe you came them or you did something to them and the daughter of the proprietor uh, did uh, something you know, that we should have overlooked as a teacher but you got angry and you forgot who this child was and you did something that made the child to run out of the class and went to the father in the office why are you here now? You must be in the class now. Uh, well, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, or Miss So-and-so, this is what she did. And look at the mark on my body. How can that be? And then the headmaster, who is the proprietor and the one that is taking care of the whole school, he calls you out and says, my daughter said this. Is that true? Yes, sir, but I got angry. She made me angry. And you didn't remember? That's my own daughter. The Lord is saying, how can you deal, how can you treat any member of the church in this way? That's my own sheep. That's my own sheep. And because of that, the love you should have shown to me and the affection you should have shown to me, you show it to him, you show it to her. We should, be, we should understand every time that the members of the church, they are not our property. They are not our slaves. And they are not people like football for us to kick around. That is his own sheep. He goes before them. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. That's how we recognize the real convert, the real child of God. They follow Christ. They will not follow idolaters. They will not follow occultic people. They will not follow a ruinous, dangerous, deceptive religion they will not follow occultism they follow him and they follow him with all their heart they follow him joyfully that's my savior that's my shepherd and this is the word of my savior my shepherd and they follow him for they know his voice look at verse 5 in verse 5 a stranger will they not follow for they know not the voice of strangers when they hear the doctrine, strange doctrine, and strange ideas, and strange unrighteous theory of a theologians. They say, no, I will not follow that. This is what Jesus said. This is what my Savior said. The one that has gone before me to prepare heaven for me, this is what he said. That's how we know the true sheep. That's how we know the real child of God. That's how we recognize they have real salvation. In verse 27, in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice when they come to hear the word of God proclaimed by Christ, the word that is eternal. They don't see it and choose and reject some. I like that message. I don't like that message. I don't want to hear about holiness. I don't want to hear about righteousness. I want to hear about healing and deliverance. I want to hear about prosperity. I want to hear about a positive sin that will get me on the go, make me have money. No, my sheep hear my voice. All the words of the Lord, every doctrine of the word of God, as Christ has given unto us, because he commanded us, and he said, go and teach all things whatsoever I have commanded you. He says, my sheep hear my voice, 
and I know them and they follow me. They don't uh, hear the word of God one day and then say that is a hard sin. Who can receive that? And then they sit back at home and then we go to them and say, ah, what happened? You're not coming again. I came last Sunday and what I heard, I don't think I want to do that. You cannot do it by your strength. It takes the grace of God. And it says, my grace is sufficient for you. Whenever you hear anything in the word of God that's above you, understand that's the way it should be. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. If you could do it without grace, that's not the word of God. If you could accomplish it in your own natural strength, that will not be the word of God. But if it drives you on your knees and you say, Lord, I'm powerless in myself. I am nothing. And without you, I can do nothing. Give me your grace. Of his grace, have we, have we all received the fullness of his grace? Grace for grace. And then we have faith after faith, faith upon faith. And we live by the faith of the Son of God, not in our own strength. And so you encourage them. They go back. They come back and show the evidence that they're the real children of God and they have genuine salvation. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Verse 28, it says, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. You will not perish. I said you will not perish. Neither can any man, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You know, those who are true, genuine children of God, they are really converted no matter how sweet, no matter how convincing naturally the voice of a stranger is, of a false prophet is, there will be something on the inside saying that's a wolf. That's a false prophet. That man is dangerous. Although he talks well like that, they wear the sheep's clothing, but inwardly the ravening wolves run away from them. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. There are people that go about and they say, which church are you going? I'm going to this church now. I'm so excited. I didn't know the Bible like that before. It comes afresh to me. And every time I pray and I want to follow on and then somebody will tell them you know i was there before or you may even say i'm still there but you know they, they will say it's not everything you hear that you'll just take like that hook line and sinker because you know this and this and they, be, they begin to tell uh, unheard of stories and things that will confuse a young convert and things that to discourage a real member of the church and they put some facts and some lies and they weave them together and throw at them if you're a real child of God there'll be a witness in your heart that this is not all true in any case all that is saying is not my concern the word of God and the word of Christ and the word of my Savior is important thing to me because I'm with the Lord I'm so joyful to the Lord I'm so glued to the Lord and there will be nobody that will pluck me out of his hand nobody will pluck you out in Jesus name you will abide you will remain and the Lord will take care of you if anybody tries to tell you any lie that will discourage you and send you away from the kingdom of God you will not allow anyone to send you to hell in Jesus name and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Who is that? And they shall never perish. Who is that? I see the glory of God upon your faces. Neither shall any man, any man, any man, whatever his intention, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Nobody will pluck you out in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 6, 
we're reading from verse 18. It says in Romans chapter 6, verse 18, being then made free from sin, the Savior, the shepherd, by his blood, he cleanses us, he washes us, and he makes us free. Being made free from sin, he became the servant of the servants of righteousness. In verse 22, look at verse 22, being now now be made free from sin and become servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life the lord has given us a work to do and that work will prosper in your hand i said the work of god will prosper in your hand let's look at luke chapter 14 verse 23 luke chapter 14 we're reading from verse 23 and the lord said unto the servants go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in don't leave them in the highway don't leave them in the hedges. Don't leave them in the wilderness. Don't leave them in the world. Don't leave them where you find them is concerned about them because many of them are scattered and they are fainting a sheep without a shepherd. And he has committed the work each your hand into our hands together. You reach the one next to you. I reach what the one next to me and by and by will all bring them in don't allow them to give any excuse and don't say they are too tough, they are so hard the grace of God will be sufficient for every one of us in Jesus name compel them to come in that my house may be filled his house will be full in Jesus name none of the people outside there that jesus died for will perish through your carelessness or my carelessness in jesus name the lord will use you more and more his grace will multiply in your life his power will multiply in your life his anointing will never dry up in your life in jesus name go and do what he has said it will go with you it will never leave you you will succeed and this work of god will prosper in your hand in my hand in our hands together in jesus name compel them to come in let's rise up and tell the lord oh lord we will we will do what you have called us to do is the good shepherd is the great shepherd is the glorious chief shepherd and has appointed us as shepherds giving us a work to do that work must prosper in our hands